Hey YouTube, it's Emmanuel from Tech Insomnia, and today we're going to be building a custom PC for video editing, audio production, 3D modeling, rendering, and a little bit of light gaming. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoy. Let's get to it. Quick little pro tip for you guys, always label the front of the styrofoam before you take the case out of the box. This just helps you get the case back into the box easier for transportation or delivery if you're building for someone else. Now before we really get into it, it's a good idea to keep everything as organized as possible. What I've done is I've taken the screws that come with the case and I've just put them into trays, which just allows for easy sorting, easy access, and just keeps everything really, really organized. It's good to keep your tools organized too. So I've got this uh, slide out drawer here which I can just kind of grab tools when I need it. And of course, my black coffee, ready to go. Now before I put the motherboard in, I'm doing something custom to this computer on the legs of the case. Now, the plastic feet that come with this case, its only downfall is these little plastic feet, and they're very, very slippery. It's not really that great quality. So what I've done is I've replaced them with these rubber hardware. So I mean, if you look at the difference, in overall height, it really gives it a nice amount of lift that's gonna allow more air to enter from the bottom, as well as give this case incredible grip on any surface that my client chooses to place the computer. So, just a little innovative trick. And something else I've done here is I've ensured that the power supply will go on flush. So, yeah, just a little trick. I've done it a few times. Always turns out really, really well. Stock fans are out motherboard is in. Now that the motherboard is in, this is a really good time to just sit for a second and just take a look at the board and just pre-plan every part that's going to go in. Now that you can see where all the ports are on the board, the fan ports, you can really kind of estimate and get an idea of um, where you're going to run your wires, how you're going to run them, what you're going to install first, and just kind of pre-plan the build a little bit before you start putting parts in. Kind of protects you from having to take parts out and put them back in again. You want to get the wiring right the first time. So it's always good to just, once the board is in, just take a second, sit back, and just plan and assess everything. Got the case wiring done now. I did something really cool with the USB 3 port. One thing you always want to keep in mind is when doing this type of cabling, you want to make sure you hold the ports so that way you're not putting pressure on the actual plugs itself and not potentially bending those pins. So I've kind of curled it underneath and the wires are actually um, adjacent to each other with the zip tie holding in both points. So it adds a really, really clean look. But as I said, you wanna make sure that you hold the port and that you bend the wires correctly. It's kind of hard to see here, but there's no additional unnecessary pressure on these ports the wires just look ultra clean. This one I'll plug in after. Now for the power supply. Fresh. Look at those details. The beautiful thing about a fully modular power supply is we can literally install the power supply and then choose where our cables are going to go one by one rather than having to pre-plan, pre-zip tie, and then execute. Really, really good thing to have in any build. So I've got the power supply in, and I've run the CPU power. I figured to put the uh, hard drive bracket and the fan in, only because it'll be difficult once the motherboard power and SATA power is running through. Very, very tricky part was getting these to run cleanly behind the case. This is the CPU power to the motherboard. These are 140 millimeter thermal take fans, and as you can see, there's a screen in between them, which gives it a little bit more width, I just had to be very, very careful and use my pry tool to fit that in perfectly. I haven't put too much pressure on the ports. Just gotta take your time and be very, very careful when running the cables in order to make sure that you don't bend or damage any ports in the motherboard. One thing I always like to do whenever possible, cut back on case noise, is use zip ties rather than screws. Only because the vibration that comes from these case fans can basically travel through the case and create noise. Now, if your case has holes where you can run the ties through, try it out. Definitely I've noticed a difference. See, this one will go like that, and then one zip tie will secure both of them. 
through the holes there. Definitely something to try out if you want to reduce case noise in any PC build. I'm using an IDE to 3-pin fan power adapter to power the two front intake fans and the two top exhaust fans. Less electricity running through the motherboard, less heat. Every little bit counts, right? A little bit less heat on the motherboard. It's all these little things added up and make a big difference. like to um, put a little bit of electrical tape here on the connectors for possible chance that those metal connectors could possibly touch the case because I'm bending these cables and twisting them and better safe than sorry. I can, uh, <laughs> I can anticipate some people going crazy most likely in the comment section. Oh, this isn't necessary. That wasn't necessary. Look guys, all these little things added up make a huge, huge difference. And the effort and time you take and put into it determines how good it will turn out put the most amount of effort into it. The reason why there are so many zip ties on this section here leading up is because I actually used this thick cable from the power supply to create almost like a brace. So one zip tie at a time, the cable is thick enough that you can manipulate it as an actual support. Now it leads unattached to anything from here up. And if you look carefully, it's it's bended just enough where it's loose on both sides. So it's not creating any additional strain or pressure on the CPU power ports for the motherboard. Very, very important. And a neat little trick too. Takes some time and some practice. But once you get the hang of it, it's worth it. So I've got the CPU and the RAM in. I was able to do something really cool here motherboard power connector just to make it look really really clean same thing with the um, fan connector for this fan I just tucked it in underneath bracing against the metal really really clean <laughs> really nice time to get the heat sink in I've heard really good things about this one I get the Western Digital Black put in now right before the CPU cooler perfect Really like these new locking mechanisms here. Really, really cool. Super easy to install the CPU cooler. And that plate with its shape lets you see when it's really attached securely to the bracket. Very nice. Always a good idea to boot the machine before the GPU goes in. Moment of truth. Ooh. Gorgeous. thing is like a wind tunnel as soon as I turned it on I could feel <laughs> I could feel the air coming from this thing incredible secondary 8 terabyte hard drive is in did the wiring as cleanly as I could going into the motherboard here now it's time for the GPU graphics card is in. Now I've done something special with the graphics card. The power connector cable, I've ran it through the back here. And using zip ties while pulling but not too tough, I've actually secured it in a way that the power cable acts as a brace to keep the GPU up and prevent um, graphics card droop or motherboard droop, which is when the weight of the graphics card over time causes the port that it connects into to kind of curve or bend. So this will actually give it extra support and prevent that from happening.
this thing is just blazing fast. Here's the read and write speed, uh, benchmarking the SSD very fast. All in all, this thing turned out really, really well. So we're just going to do a quick boot test now. This was a really, really fun build to take on. I sincerely hope you guys found value. And if you did, please like and subscribe. It really, really helps out my channel. Appreciate all the support. You guys are the best. Thank you so much. And stay tuned for more tech-related videos to come in the future. Tutorials, reviews, everything tech. Stay safe out there, guys. Till the next one. Take care.